Hi, welcome back to my podcast. This is Rosalind Yukic from A Little R&R, and I am so glad that you are with me today. If you are a new listener, I want to just welcome you to my podcast. This is a place where you are going to find answers for your questions in how to live a godly life as a godly woman. Now, I am changing up the format a little bit as of today. I feel like um, my goal here at the A Little r r podcast is to answer your questions. I get answers coming in or questions coming in all of the time. And so I am taking some of those questions and answering them starting today. So here is the first question that I'm going to answer today. And the question is this, how can I establish a habit in devotions and obedience and desire to always put God first? So are you ready? Here we go. Okay, so the question, how can I establish a habit in devotions and obedience and desire to always put God first? This is such a great question. And what it does is it sets us up for where we're going to be going here for the next while because I get a lot of questions about how to do devotions, where to start reading in your devotions, um, should we do, do devotions in the morning or the evenings, or does it even really matter? So there are a lot of those types of questions. And so that is where we're going to be going for the next while, talking about how to have a real quality, quiet time with God. And so the first one is, how do I establish a habit in this? Well, the when you look at how you establish a habit in devotions, in daily devotions, um, and, and I like how the person put it, and obedience and desire to always put God first. So you have to ask yourself, so how do I create a new habit in my life generally? How would I create a new habit in losing weight, which is something I'm doing right now? How do I uh, establish a habit in um, exercising? Generally, we think about health, especially when we come to the end of a, a, end of a year, right? We're looking towards the, the new year. We want to get healthy. We want to be more fit. And so I'm sort of equating it with that because I feel like that's where a lot of our minds are right now. Um, and ha- so how do you do it? Well, the first thing you do is you decide you want to do it. You make it a priority. And so as you make it a priority, you begin to build your life, your schedule, your um, decisions around that priority. So um, when you go to the grocery store, what are you going to buy? You're not going to buy junk food. You're going to buy health food. Um, when you know your friends want to get together after work, and you've already, you know, said, well, after work, I'm going to start going to the gym. Then, you know, you tell your coworkers, I'm sorry, I, you know, this is a new habit that I'm wanting to establish. I can't go tonight, you know, or whatever. And so you build those decisions, your life around that priority. And it is the same way when we want to begin establishing a habit of daily devotions and our obedience to God. Now, I like how they said, and desire to always put God first, because how do we, how do we get a desire? We get a desire by first deciding that we want to do something. Whenever I get back onto keto, um, I, I can tell you that my desire is not always there. In fact, it's rarely ever there. Usually, um, it's just like, oh, I know I need to do this, but I uh, just really love my popcorn. You know, that is my thing. I mean, people who know me know that I love popcorn. But when I make the decision to do it, and I just do it, um, regardless of what my desires are in the moment, um, as I begin to feel better, as my energy begins to pick up, as I begin to see the scales and the inches go down, and I overall just feel so much better without those, um, you know, crunchy, salty snacks that I just like so much, the desire comes. It comes. The decision comes first, and then the desire follows the decision. And it is really the same way with building a desire for God and a desire to put God first. The decision has to be there, and the action needs to follow the decision. And when we begin to walk in that decision, as we begin to walk out that priority, the desire is going to come. So 
make that decision and make it a priority. Begin to build your life around that. And as you build your life around it, as you begin to walk out that priority day after day after day, then you will see that the desire begins to come. And then the more you feed that desire, then the more that desire grows. And as that desire grows, and as you begin to walk out that priority day after day after day after day, it becomes a habit. And um, and so that's, that's how you begin to build that habit. Now, here are some practical ways that you begin making devotion a priority in your life. The first is pick a spot. Pick a spot in your house. Where are you gonna have your daily devotions? My spot is right there at the kitchen table. That is my spot. So I get I get up in the morning, I grab my coffee or my tea, depending on what I'm drinking that day, and I sit down at the table, and I have all of my things. I'm going to talk about that in just a moment, and that's where I have my devotion. So, that, so the first thing, pick a place. Second time, pick a time. Now, I just want to say, as we... Uh, in the weeks to follow, we are going to be talking about, is it better to have it in the morning or in the evening? Um, and so, you know, whatever works for you, you know, you do that. Um, my time is in the morning, and so I have a specific time in the morning. So don't just pick a time of day. Pick a specific time. What time of the day am I going to be? Am I going to be sitting in my spot? Am I going to be sitting at my kitchen table having my devotions? Pick a time. Put it on your phone as a reminder and make that that is an, your appointment with God. Now, I want to just put a qualifier around this, though. Um, avoid thinking of my devotions as a time slot. Now, this is the time of day that I'm going to establish that moment, right? But I'm going to extend it out throughout the whole day. Now, if you have your devotions in the evening, then you're taking what you what you studied last night, what you read last night, and you're going to extend that out until tomorrow night. Um, I go from morning to evening, so so don't just say, "Okay, my devotions are done. Let's get on with our day." No, actually, that is just that was the initial like splash and now I'm going to make that I'm going to extend that all day so I'm going to be thinking about it I'm going to be praying about it throughout the day what I'm doing checking back in um you know so that what I learned during that time of devotion I'm going to be now applying to my life throughout the day because it's not you know it's not like having a dentist appointment you walk in you get your tooth, tooth fixed or your teeth checked and you walk out and you're done it's not, that's not how devotions work. They aren't like that. It is, this is the initial time where I'm sitting, quieting myself before God. I'm learning at his feet, but I'm not getting up and walking away. I'm getting up and I'm taking it with me. So, um, so just, you, we need to kind of change our thinking about that a little bit. Then, um, and the next thing is, is you need to set yourself up for success. So what I do is the night before I put my, Bible and my notebook and my pen at my spot so that I have everything that I need to get going. You see it and then it's just like, yeah, you know, so I do that. I set myself up for success. So um, we're picking a place, we're picking at a time, we're setting it up and then we want to start simple. Start simple. Um, don't dive right into the book of Jeremiah or Ezekiel. <laughs> They're kind of difficult to understand at times. You want to start simple, start with the book of John, start with the book of Luke, um, you know, start with the book of Psalms or Proverbs. Those are books that are really easy to digest and they're they're great when you get into them they sort of prod you on and keep you going so you want if you're starting out if you're just starting out start out with simple read until three things stand out to you so you have your notebook so you can write those three things down if something stands out to you write it down once you have three things stop stop and then take those three things you know if it's in a notebook put it write it down again on a slip of paper and put it in your pocket so that every time you put your hand in your pocket, you feel it there and it's reminding you of those three things. Then tomorrow, pick up where you left off and then read again until three more things stand out to you. So you're not, um, you're, you're not overshooting yourself. You want to start off simple because um, because that's, it's not going to discourage you. This is what we often do. It's sort of like, you know, with exercise, I'm going to jog a mile. 
um, that might be a little bit too much if you aren't already in a habit of doing that. If you aren't reestablishing um, a habit that you left off just a short time ago. If you're a beginner, you want to start where beginners start so that you don't get discouraged on the first day. So your place, your time, setting it up, you keep it simple, start simple. And then the last thing is grab accountability. Now I'm doing this right now. I have a friend that contacted me a couple days ago, help in this one area, and I'm like, I do too. <laughs> Coincidence, I am actually right there with you. And so we both said, okay, we're gonna keep each other accountable. We're gonna check in, you know, every day, every couple of days. And that's what we've been doing. And, and you know what? Immediately, things started to turn around for the both of us. Immediately, it's like, I had a great day. Um, the next day, I'm doing much better. And it's because when you know you have to check in with somebody, you're not going to be lazy about it. Um, and so often with our devotions, we have a tendency to get a little bit lazy, um, especially if there's not somebody there that's holding our feet to the fire. And so grab that accountability even as, if it's just one friend or your pastor's wife, somebody that you know is going to hold your feet to the fire and is going to check in with you regularly to see how you're doing. And when you know that you have to answer that person, chances are you're going to stick to it. So this is how you begin to make those decisions. You begin to walk in obedience and you begin to cultivate a desire for the Lord. So you need to just make the decision to do it and then make it a priority. Build your life around it and begin walking that out. And as you walk it out, then that desire to walk in obedience to Christ each and every day by staying consistent in the word and in prayer it is going to help you to build that habit in the new year. So I hope that this was an encouragement to you. If it was, if this uh, podcast spoke to you, would you share this with a friend? Because that really helps this podcast get out to more people. Also, if you are watching this on Rumble or BitChute, I just want to encourage you to, um, to give it a like. Now on Rumble, you do that by rumbling the video. Um, also, you can leave a comment in the comment section. That would be um, also a great way to um, help this podcast and this video get out to more people. And also be sure to follow me. Don't forget to follow me because as you follow me, then you get notified whenever a new video goes up. So be sure to do that. And I will see you back here next week.